that'll be an interesting story to tell. <laughs> but that was a good one. I gotta give you. I gotta give you that. That was a good one. Okay. That one's not getting repeated on the recording though. All right. All right. So let's get started. Um, so uh, just so you all are aware, and just so everybody's on the same page, you all have a homework due today that is being collected right here. Remember, I'm not turning or I'm not accepting late submissions, so um, I need that, you know, now. Um, attendance grades are up to date, and then homework three is graded in return. You all have that back. Um, the solutions up on Blackboard with Engineering Career Day, I don't think I had time to turn it on, but I'll turn it on before I leave the room today, so you all will, will have access to the solution. Uh, I, let me say a couple things about the solution to homework number four, and I, and I sort of mentioned this before class started, but I want to make sure everybody hears it. This is a design homework, okay? And I do my best to restrict the problem so that we should all arrive at the same answer, but where it is design, there is some open-endedness to it. So I, I want to make two points about this homework. Number one, it's going to take a long time to grade, okay? It's not, it's not going to get graded tomorrow. Like, that's not happening, okay? Uh, and number two, it is very possible that your answer and my answer are different, but you still got it right, okay? Because it's design, okay? Um, you need to follow the general procedures that were set forth in the problem, and you need to produce a beam that has an efficiency of, you know, over 90% or whatever. There's a couple different ways to do that. So I don't want you to think, oh, I didn't get this answer, I, I flunked the homework. That, that's not what happened. Nor will that be the case uh, on the exam. It's, it's open-ended. It, it's designed. The exam is a little more restricted, so you really should arrive at the same answer on the exam. Uh, and it's all, I mean, the problems are, are boiled down a little bit because, you know, we only have 50 minutes, so, but, but don't worry. I use the same, like, rule of three on this exam that I do on all my others. If I can do the exam in 20 minutes, you can do it in an hour, so, and that's the case with this exam as well. So it shouldn't be a time crunch. Um, let's get into exam review. These slides are on Blackboard, so you have this. You have everything uh, ready to go. A um, couple things. Uh, it's closed book, closed notes. Just like in my previous courses, I let you all use the formula sheet. You can put whatever you want on that formula sheet except for worked out examples. And, and this class, more than any, is, is really one where you don't want to put worked out examples because you start pulling the area of steel from your formula sheet and then it's a different area of steel on your exam and I'm wondering, where did you get this number? You know, th so, so this is definitely one where you wouldn't want to do that. It covers lecture notes one through eight and homeworks one through four. We're going to start the exam at 9.55, okay? And we got a little bit of a, a caveat because after this class is mechanics of materials or mechanics of deformable bodies, and they have an exam on Friday as well, so we can't stretch it a little farther because they got to get ready for their exam. So we're going to start at 9.55, and I'm probably going to end it. I haven't decided, but I'm, I'm, honestly, I'm probably going to have to end it like at around 10.50-ish because i got to have time to collect them and staple them and whatnot. So I'm, I'm happy to start early, but we gotta, we got to get to it. So try and be here on time, okay? I've got scratch, uh, scratch paper and staplers. You're going to worry about that. And also tabular data, anything that's tabulated, like rebar sizes and things like that. You ain't got to worry about that. Um, all, that's take, all, all that that you need on the exam is there. But please do not populate your formula sheet with rebar sizes and things like that. You, you'd be wasting your space. Yes? That too. If you need them, they'll be there. If, if you need them. Um, I'm not going to give you 30 pages of them. So, um, But that's a, that's a good question. Anything so far? All right. So here's what's on the exam. So fundamental topics, make sure you generally know the process of structural engineering. You know, the stuff we talked about in the very beginning. What's the role of the engineer? What's the role of the consultant? Um, make sure you know the difference between ASD and LRFD. Um, that, that's kind of important from a conceptual standpoint. From a loads standpoint, make sure you know how to identify tributary area. Make sure you can do basic load takedowns. Um, make sure you know when to perform live load reduction. Make sure you know that uh, you need to factor loads according to LRFD load combos. Uh, and also, uh, demonstrate a basic understanding of lateral loads, but nothing too, too detailed. Um, no, nothing major there. We didn't do anything really with lateral loads. So just knowing that wind and seismic are lateral loads is probably more than enough. 
Um, <clears throat> make sure you can generally describe the fundamental properties of concrete, like what's the stress strain curve, bless you, what's the stress strain curve look like, you know, the fact that it uh, behaves well in compression but very weak in tension. Uh, the big topic, however, is, uh, sorry, is flexural analysis and design. Make sure you can analyze beams that behave elastically up until their cracking moment. Make sure you can analyze beams after they've cracked, you know, the transform section method. Make sure you can employ the Whitney stress block, you know, the .85 FC prime to compute MN and VMN. Uh, make sure you can verify uh, ACI requirements for steel area and for strain. And for design, make sure you can design for an unknown cross-section, a known cross-section, and for slabs. No T-beams, no, no T-beams on this exam. Um, this slideshow, which is on Blackboard, has a lot of, it's, it's got a lot of nice, has a pretty good summary of all the formulas that you'll need on the exam. Maybe not so much the methods, but the formulas. Like for instance, for loads, I've got your unit weights for steel and reinforced concrete, live load reduction, also your element factors, and when it doesn't apply and, and limits for live load, uh, other limits for live load reduction, your load combos, um, material properties, so here's how you calculate the modulus of elasticity, uh, if it's any weight concrete or normal weight concrete, here's how you compute your modular ratio, your modulus of rupture, you know the E of steel is 29,000 KSI, um, your lambda values, uh, for flexural analysis, we know that the cracking moments, FRIG over YT, we know that MN is ASFYD minus A over 2, and A is this. Uh, you know, you can either calculate it from a, um, uh, a capacity standpoint or A equals beta 1C. We know our strain value in the steel. Remember, we're only dealing with rectangular cross sections, so you can pretty much take these formulas as, uh, as verbatim. Uh, the relationship for beta 1, how you compute beta 1, uh, how you cal uh, calculate phi, um, your row values, so these are the row values for an unknown cross section, these are the row values for a known cross section. Uh, here's your ACI requirements, and here's your slab reinforcement requirements. So that's pretty much everything from a formula standpoint in, in a nutshell, okay? You, then you. So these uh, past three slides only need to handle our sheet? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and anything else you deem appropriate. No, that's not going to be given. Yeah, but I mean, it, there's nothing in that table that you couldn't sort of figure out on your own. I mean, that t all this table is, is this. You know, at 4,000 it's 0.85 and then 0.8, you know, 0.75 or, you know, 0 0.7, 0 0.65. It's just, that's all this is. This is that. So, you, know, you can represent that just with that line. Yes. What? Oh, the the question was, how do you know when to use method one versus method two? So method one was factoring your loads and then using WL squared over eight. Method two is getting a dead load moment, getting a live load moment, and then factoring that, right? Okay, here's the answer. First off, method two works all the time, all the time, okay? You can always use method two, okay? The reason why we don't use it for slabs or haven't used it in some of our in-class examples is because those examples have been nothing but simply supported beams, uniformly distributed loads. So because it's the, the dead load and the live load are the same, just get a factored load and then WL squared over eight. It's less number crunching. Method two will work as well. Like if you take some of our, take the slab problem and then do method one and method two, you get the same answer, okay? The reason for method two is what if your dead loads are distributed but your live load, it's a concentrated live load at mid-span? Or um, uh, you, if you have a distributed dead load but a bunch of point loads. When you have different loads, like for dead and live, you know, if one's distributed, one's concentrated, one's triangular or what have you, then you need to analyze those moments separately and that's when you use method two. Get a dead load moment, a live load moment, and factor that. But if the loads are the same and the geometry is the same, just be lazy and use method one. Does that make sense? And does that make sense to everybody else? Okay. Yes?
Yeah. That's a good question. Um, so the question was, uh, if, when it comes to efficiency, um, if you are doing a design problem and your efficiency comes out to be 0.86, is that a problem? This is how I'll answer that. Um, how long did homework four take you? Some people said it didn't take very long. Some people, it's not something you can do on a 50-minute exam, right? Okay? All right. I know that too. Okay? So the problems that you've got on the exam, they are restricted some to where that's to where you can do it in the allotted time. That's that's point one. That may that doesn't directly answer your question, but this will. Done correctly, that shouldn't be a problem. If the exam's done correctly, you shouldn't have an issue with that. I'm not because I can't say any more than that, but Oh, I would start tweaking stuff with the design. Um, uh, well, if your efficiency is, what, 0 0.86, that means your beam's too big or you have too much reinforcement. I'd start shaving stuff down. I'd probably start with uh, trying to reduce the beam size. That's probably what I would do, make it shallower or something like that. Um, you got too much steel in it. Yeah, if you're using minimum dimensions, you got too much steel in it. And let me also say this, and this is an issue that's actually come up in senior design a couple times. Um, if you're designing like a roof column uh, in a building, and the roof column is only supporting, you know, snow load for such and such tributary area, it's actually not a lot of load. So you can get some weird efficiencies and some weird numbers by going off minimum dimensions. And that's fine because there's just not much load, so you're just going with the minimum member size, and it's possible that your efficiency is low. That won't be an issue for us. I'm just bringing that up for later. Yes, sir. Um, it's possible that your your ACI minimum steel requirements and your strain limits will cause your efficiency to go down but only in scenarios where you really don't have a lot of load. I mean, if you look at the design problems we've been doing so far, the, the, the beams that we've been designing have got some pretty hefty loads. I mean, we're talking like live loads of two kips per foot or one, you know, one, I mean, that's 2,000 pounds per foot. I mean, think, that's a foot and that's 2,000 pounds. So that, that's, that's a lot of load. Um, in those issues or in, on your homework problems, you probably didn't have an issue at all with ACI minimum steel. You're probably putting in like six square inches of steel. I'm making these numbers up. You're probably putting in like six square inches of steel, and you look at your ACI minimum, and the minimum steel is like 0.8. You know, not not even not even close. Um, so, is it possible? Yeah, yeah, it's possible, but you'd have to have some really light loading. So, and I mean, you almost wonder if it's that light. Like, why are you even using concrete? You know. Go get you some some two by twelves or something. I'm I'm joking, but not really though. But yeah, does that answer your question? Um, floor is yours. That was not bad. The floor is yours. No pun intended. No, that's not bad. We are designing floor beams. Okay, you, then you. you. Uh, on the homework that we did, the first problem, it had two point loads. Yes. And we had to, we did, weren't given the B value, we had to get the B minimum assumed at first. Yep. Um, when we go to calculate the I, like WL, how, what do we use for that? What? I'm, I don't understand. When you're, like, you calculate your W0 and your WL, Um, I, I don't really understand the question. The, on, on homework number, on problem one, wasn't the live load given to you? Are you talking about the dead load from concrete? 
I was thinking the two PLs at thirty. But uh, okay. Yeah. First, well, a couple of things. If you go to to design aid one, or the, the remember the the aid with the moments and shears and whatnot. Yeah. That that right there. There's moment diagrams for that. That's okay. What I was trying okay. To now now, but 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 my second question: If I didn't give you that at all, like you all had CE 312 last semester, he was he was a horrible professor, I know. But I know you can draw a moment diagram. Well, you can you can use that, but that that is supposed to make your life easier. But but don't treat it like a, a crutch either. Um, you know, you don't need it. Is is what I'm getting at. Um, but you don't need a B or anything or, or beam dimensions for that. You have two 30 kip loads applied. You know, at third points on the beam. You can either use this to determine the moment at mid span or just draw a moment diagram. Um, but did you did you add those up and divide to get like a distributed load? Um, well, I was trying to like go off the WL equals PL times D. But that was for slabs. That was a pressure load. Okay. Uh, so what I ended up doing for the first problem is not the best idea. I just kind of for that one little step I went to Chad and used that equation to get it. So <laughs> you didn't hear that, but that's what I did. <laughs> <laughs> You know that's not on the exam, right? Yeah, I was hoping so. Oh, nope. you're saying check. Yeah. Uh, yeah, fully, fully aware of that. That's why I was asking the question now. Oh, just wait till. Just, <laughs> just wait till homework five. Um, that's the only step. Come on, get the last by this. <laughs> Just wait till homework five. Uh, you, are you good? I, I, don't, I don't understand. Um, I will. I, I, you'll know. You'll have specificity on that. Okay. But you also got to recognize it can't get too detailed. We don't have much time. So. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. I'll, I'll know. Um. But yeah, look. Let me say this. I I don't care how many design aids or formulas or anything I give you. Guys, again, I don't. I really don't want you to treat these beam design aids, these you know moment shear diagrams. I don't want you to treat them as crutches. Th th that's not what they are. Okay. I mean, you know, some of these problems uh, like you got on your homework, with, you had like a cantilever beam or something with with load on it. I know that you can calculate support reactions and draw shear and moment diagrams for a cantilever beam. I know you can. I taught you how to do it. Okay, I now right there. This this is CE 413. The direct prerequisite of this class is CE 312. It assumes that you know how to do that stuff. Uh, uh, <laughs> I I do have a response for for that. Okay. <laughs> No, no, this one's got more, more a dramatic flair to it. You know, you can see it. See this, like, that's just lazy. Like, put some energy into it. <laughs> I know, yeah. That's another thing. Yeah, you, yeah, that guy. Exactly. <laughs> I'm not going to give you the whole thing. I'll give you what you need. But what he said. But you'll give it to us. Yeah. 
Yes. When do you use live over deduction? That, that's a great question. Okay. Um, from an exam standpoint, I, I'll keep this answer simple. Use live load reduction when you're told to use live load reduction. Otherwise, don't worry about it. And, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm telling you that because I don't want you to waste time on problem whatever three or whatever if, if you're sitting there trying to do all this live load reduction, you don't even have enough information to do it and then you didn't have to worry about it anyway. So if it says to perform live load reduction, like, do it. Otherwise, don't worry about it. Because it's just more stuff on the exam that you don't have to worry about. P plus, here's another thing, and, and, and hopefully, you know, th this theme is, is, is held through in my, in my previous exams. I'm not a fan of asking the same thing over and over again. You know, this exam format is very similar to my previous exams. The first question's all conceptual-based stuff, and then two, three, and four are calculation-based problems. I don't want to, you know, it, let's say, for instance, I make you do live load reduction on problem two. I'm certainly not wanting you to do it on three and four because that's just the same thing over and over again. That, you showed me you, ha you can do it once. The rest is just wasting your time. It's not evaluating your understanding of the materials. So I'm, I'm not going to put it on there. Um, but uh, from an exam standpoint, unless it says to do it, don't. Okay. Now, in a reality standpoint, like when you perform live load reduction, uh, the answer is pretty much always un unless you don't meet the, the, the limits. And what I mean by that is this. Okay. When you look up a live load in the specification, you know, you'll be designing uh, a library or a hospital or an office building or whatever. Um, Based on your design, you know, if you're designing a, a, a library, you look up the specified live load for a library, and it's 150 pounds per square foot. Um, you then, right there, right there, and then ask yourself, can I reduce that live load? You can't because the code does not allow you to uh, perform live load reduction any time your original specified load is greater than 100. Okay, but if I'm doing an office building and it's 80 pounds per square foot for a corridor. Can you apply live load reduction? Yeah. Um, now you can't apply it if your tribute, if your KLLAT is less than 400. But any of those other instances, yeah. So in reality, apply it any time that you can. But for our purposes and for the exam, don't apply it unless you're told, because that's just wasting your time. So that answer your question. Again, floor is yours. Anything worrying you about the exam? Anything worrying, anybody worrying, are they worried? I mean, they could join us, put them on speakerphone. <laughs> yeah, Leo, just yeah, any take questions your phone on speakerphone. It's not the best. We're all interested <laughs> in my life experience. Oh, it, it, I mean, like, we could mess with him. We, we, like, uh, you know, we could say, he's taking a test right now. You know, he's in class. I'm about, I'm about to fail him for academic dishonesty. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. That would be messed up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, man. The, the what? Say it again. No, no, the first part I didn't hear. Okay. Well, no, no, well, the only dead load, the only load that you would have to determine is self weight. That I mean, uh, I, I guess. If we want to be general, there's three different force effects that we could consider on, on a beam. There's a live load, then there's dead load, and then self-weight. I mean, we factor self-weight as if it's dead load because it is. It, it's permanent load that's not going anywhere. But self-weight is something that you, would, that you could compute as opposed to what's being given to you. Um, 
what I, to, to, to answer your question, what, what I'll say is this. The difference between a beam self-weight and a superimposed dead load might be something like this. Might be, um, okay, there's the, uh, here's a perfect example, okay? Let's say there's a beam running right here, okay? So there's the beam self-weight, but another dead load is the wall up there, you know, the wall from the other shore. So that is a permanent load that's not going anywhere that's just sitting right there on that beam. So that would be a superimposed dead load. And, and not how you would compute it is the same way you'd compute anything. You know, it's a wall, it's this thick, it's made of this material. You know, figure out how much it weighs and, you know, calculate that per foot. But for our purposes, I'll just say maybe something like here's the beam self-weight, and then there's also, you know, 500 pounds per foot of dead load. And that might be what it represents. It could be the other components of the structure. It could be permanent attachments, uh, uh, even equipment in some instances. Although that's a little, you got to be careful with that because is it related to occupancy or not? If it's what the building's being used for, you'd probably be better to treat it as live load. But but the, the, the difference, the reason why there is a different load factor, you tell me why is there a different load factor between dead load and live load? There you go. There's more uncertainty associated with My fans. Um, the, 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 he's right. There's more uncertainty associated with live load than there is dead load. Um, it, you know, so we factor the live loads higher because we're less certain about them. We're less certain about the floor loads in this classroom than we are the actual weight of the floor. That's a concrete slab that's yay thick, so much material, we can calculate that. Um, so that's sort of the difference. I know I got a little windy with that answer, but did that kind of answer your question? Okay, that, okay, now that's for a slab, yeah. yeah. Um, it's possible, no, that's a good, okay, that's a great question. It's possible, um, but. Exactly, exactly right, because it's just a pressure load applied over that width, you know. So it's, it's the same thing. Yeah. Good question. Oh my goodness. Are you are you singing hip bone connected to the leg bone? Oh my <laughs> This is not biology. You're not in an A and P course. Anatomy and physiology. I I don't think anybody in here has. <laughs> Thought it like changed from nursing or anything, did you? It, <laughs> Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yes, I did. And like all good engineers, I am now going to verify that assumption. Were you a nursing major? I was. All right, then. Oh, God. <laughs> He's talking about like here, here, and here. Just like there's two bones in your leg. <laughs> well, at, at the very least, there's one here, so there's one here, because. <laughs> Everybody's like, Dr. Mike, you're getting too close to dynamics. What? Now, what'd you say? Yeah. Yeah, there you go. It's the Mueller Breslau principle. Yeah. All right. Any any other big ticket questions about the exam? I mean, this is your time. I, I want to make sure that you are good with uh with the experience on Friday.
Y'all just seem zapped. Now, I mean, yeah, I, I am sensing a little bit of friction going on. Come on. Come on. The secret with that stuff is to just not lose your head. Like, hydraulics, hydraulics, lose your head. I got now. Man, it's. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. Are there, in all seriousness, are, are there any other big ticket questions, anything you're worried about on the exam, anything that's concerning you? All right, hold on. Two things. First off, you good? You good? Here's the thing. We have to stay until you shake your head yes. They're going to be upset at you. You get an exam, and you get an exam, and you get an exam. All right, all right, all right. Second thing, um, let's see. That's yours, and that's yours. Okay, when are we showing up on Friday? We're starting at 9.55. If you get here later, that's fine, but I'm starting this thing at 9.55 on Friday, so get here. Yes, sir? Can we reserve some parking spaces for our classes? <laughs> if we put enough parking spaces for the lab, I think we should That is between you and the, uh, the authorities of Marshall University Parking Enforcement. I got that on there. You're right. It's called... Remove my liability. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? For those of you that were at Engineering Career Day, you still good for another hour? All right. I'm headed over there now. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and call it. We'll see you all on Friday. Sign-in sheet. I need the sign-in sheet. All right.